Hello, I'm Michael Redmond, professional 9 Don Go player. In this video, um, I'm going to be talking about the direct through three point. Uh, before I start, I'd like to say that because of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, a lot of events have been canceled. Uh, for instance, overseas, the Go Congresses uh, have been affected. And the Go Association in Japan um, has not been able to hold the yearly the Go Camp the summer go camp that they have usually pl done. So because of that, uh, professional go players have lost our opportunities to teach you, and we're turning to the net. So uh, this online lecture about the invasion at the 3-3 point is going to be one of our first tries at that, and whether we conti continue or not will depend on your reaction. So we're hoping that you can spread the word on social media and get a lot of people to watch this video so that we can continue doing this. Thank you. So I'd like to start and I'm going to talk about black invading the 3-3 point um, in this position. Up to this point it's um, it doesn't really matter which side white um, plays on. White would usually, if white had a stone uh, in the middle of the side, for instance, somewhere around here, white would be wanting to cover from this side, but otherwise it wouldn't really matter. And first I'm going to talk about the old joseki, which has pretty much disappeared from professional play. Um, if white plays here and extends, this is the joseki we used to play, and black would usually play the hanetsugi here. So this would be the normal shape, and this is almost completely disappeared from professional play, I haven't seen it uh, myself. And uh, that is because this is considered bad for black. So this position in itself is bad for black um, because white has superior thickness. And we knew that. We knew that it was locally bad for black. And usually black would be playing that um, with something, some special circumstances. Like, for instance, if there was um, some extra white stones in the vicinity, making this entire shape slightly over concentrated for white then you could see black playing that 3-3 in point invasion so usually you would have some special circumstances that made this uh, better than usual for black before black would jump into the 3-3 point so now i'll talk about the more modern variation where black uh, will crow once more and quite often play some kind of a pincer on the side the idea with this is that actually um, the peep here is very annoying for white. And when black, when white connects there and we get something like this, it turns out the wool is not so strong. And that is why we're not seeing black playing um, that, uh, this on the side, which would be reinforcing white. So it's better for black not to have that so that black can get this attack on the wall. And this was giving black a slight advantage in this general fight. So just to go back a few points to this point, uh, to where white has played the hane and black has played underneath. When this happens, I will suggest that the easy way for white to handle this, and this will work for double digit cues to single digit cues, just about anyone. It works for professionals too, playing the double hane here. This is a relatively simple variation of this joseki that just about anyone can play, and it's pretty much forced sequence. So black will cut here, and take the one stone, and white gets to take the corner. And compared to many of the variations when black has invaded the 3-3 uh, three, three point, white's wall is not quite so large um, pushing out into the center. For instance, black can push here, and black has a nice wall to the, towards the left. So the, the size of white's wall has diminished, but white is getting about 10 points in the corner there. And so that corner territory is, is what's good for white. So I should point out here that any, uh, any sequence that we call a joseki, um, it's going to be fairly much even. Uh, but the choice between uh, various josekis will present pros and cons. Um, so there's a strong point or no, and a weak point for each joseki that I'll be showing here. The strong point of this for white is that white has taken the corner territory. White is alive locally. And this sort of works with the fact that in many cases, uh, when black does this, and we get to this point, when black has played what we call the direct 3-3 three, three point, quite often there are no 
stones on the side. So there's nothing, um, no stones at points like A or B here. Which means that in some cases, it's going to be a good idea for white to be living locally and getting a, a living shape here in this variation. So this works really well for white when the white stones seem to be a bit isolated and white's not really looking to make a big moyo. Um, black can extend once here and push here. So black does have a good thickness on the left. Um, this is going to be okay for black early in the game because black does have some potential there with that strong position on the upper side. But um, it's generally even. And later in the game, it's actually better for white in many cases. First of all, living in the corner is pretty much out of the question. Like if black plays here and here, this is just very, very cramped and um, bad on all sides for black. So this is something I would rather you just didn't consider. Um, but sometimes you see players play this move. With this move, white has to be careful of the double Atari here. There's a double Atari waiting to happen here. And um, I'd say white should probably just connect on the fourth line. And this is a variation black plays when black feels it's really important for black to get um, the, right, the right side. But locally, uh, this is not nearly as good as that other variation. Let's uh, go straight back to the other variation. It's not as good as this variation for black if we look at the local position. So this is the recommended variation. And when black plays this variation, uh, one has to remember that locally, this is a good variation for white. In the previous variation, white had about 10 points in the corner. In this variation, white has more like 15 points. So there's a big difference in white's corner and there's a difference in the strength of black's position. It's on the right side in this case, it was on the upper side in the other case, but there's a lot of difference in the quality of black shape here. So let's go uh, back and I'll just say that this is the basic Joseki. And at this point, black can play away. The, one of the virtues for black is that black can play away, so black has the initiative. And that's why this is go going to be okay for black early in the game when there's a lot of big moves to play. But um, I would call it generally an even result. So that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.